is my spoiler review for El Camino, a Breaking Bad movie. Now, if you have not seen this movie, spoiler warning. If you have not seen Breaking Bad, spoiler warning. But with all that said, spoiler warning. Let's get on with the review. For some reason in my head, I always assumed that the guards or the police or whatever you want to call them just kind of let Jesse away with everything he did. I don't understand why. I thought because... Because he was held captive for a year, they're just going to let him away with it. I don't understand why I ever thought that, but that's where my mind always thought. So to get this movie, it was very good to see how he got... Like, he did, He never got away with it. He just kind of escaped the guard. He really did escape them. Like, because you first see him and he pulls into someone else's driveway and he hides down the Camino. I'm like, okay, there's no way he's going to get caught. Like, he's driving... He's, like, even, even if you watched the last episode, Jesse escapes and then you see the guards coming down to Walt. And I never assumed... Did Jesse, did Jesse run into them on the way? I just That never clicked in my mind. I never even considered it. So you see he actually does run into them and he pulls in. They never see him and he leaves. And he goes to the one place he thinks he could, which is Skinny Pete and Badger. Because there's no way his parents would let him in. So he goes to them and they just, you see Jesse looking at stink, uh, Sticky Pete, or Skinny Pete. And he's just looking at him like, Jesus, Jesse just looks like a mess. And he falls in. He comes in and he just starts eating food, which is fair enough. But he, they probably were starving him in there. They probably get like one meal a day and it was a tiny meal. And then he just collapses in the bed and he just he just collapses. He just conks out for the night and then he wakes up. But he wakes up and he starts panicking because he thinks he's in that cage. And he just starts freaking out, ripping everything off. And, this, and then Sticky, <laughs> Skinny Pete and Badger come in and they try to help him. And he has a shower. And you see, of course, like I, cause they said he needs a shower. And I assumed maybe they never showered him. But I'm thinking... No, the lads probably would have showered him because he would have stunk after a year. So they spray him with a hose. And the hose looked like one of the, like a hose from a fire truck. So they're very powerful. So they had to hurt him like a bitch to get hurt with that. And then you see you see this all playing out with Jesse. And then, yes, of course, they get the guy back from who used to destroy the cars. I couldn't tell if it was the same actor or not. I'm not really sure. But I, because I know the original guy was the creepy neighbor from downstairs and friends. But I don't know if that was the same guy. I don't know if they had the same guy from the Breaking Bad series in this. Because I don't know if he's still alive. But he was there. And then they find out there was tracking. So they had to leave the Camino. And then Skinny Pete probably one of his best moments. Saying how Jesse's his hero. And they come up with a whole plan to get rid of. So he's going to say the Camino's him. His. And then but the Badger drives onto the border with Skinny Pete's car. And then Jesse takes Badger's car and it really works out well. So they show us that they really are friends with Jesse. They really care about him. And I really, that's, I think that's from memory. That is all we got of them. But I absolutely loved it. And then Badger, our skinny Pete, gives Jesse his hat. And it was extremely weird to see him without his hat because we've never seen it. So to see that, I thought it was very strange to see him without his hat. Now, because this movie was made seven, six, seven years after Breaking Bad ended, a lot of people are going to look at it very different. And one of the biggest ones was Todd. Of course, the actor who plays Todd has gained some weight since the end of it. So I was watching it and that was my biggest thing when I seen Todd. I'm like, Jesus Christ, he looks very different. Especially because I did watch, I re-watched the entirety of Breaking Bad. So going from him being a very skinny, scrawny guy to like, he's not he's not massive. He's just, he's put on kind of a bit of a stomach. So it was very noticeable from going from, Breaking Bad episode 15 to going into this. So it kind of bothered me in that kind of way. And especially now, that actor, I don't really know him as Todd. I know him as the creepy neighbour from Game Night. So to see him there, I thought, that's, seeing him in this movie, I'd seen him as the creepy guy in Game Night. But in Breaking Bad, because he looks so skinny and so much younger, I see him Todd. So there's a big difference in that, which is where the gap kind of came in for me. Where if, if, if it was filmed seven years ago, I would never have noticed it. But because of the gap of seven years, I 100% noticed it. And while we're on the topic of Todd, we actually kind of get, see, the flashback with Todd is that he goes to Jesse and Todd go back to Todd's apartment. And Jesse comes across, the, they, I think it was his cleaning lady? Yeah, it was because his cleaning lady who Todd had to kill because she found his money. And they had to get disposed of the body, so they kind of wrap it up. He cooks Jesse soup, and he's saying how he has to find a new place for his money. And he gets rid of the body to dispose it, and then Jesse gets his gun, or... Jesse has Todd's gun pointed at him, and you just know nothing's gonna happen. Like they built a suspenseful moment to show how much, be how much Todd and his gang have just beaten Jesse down because you know he's not gonna shoot him because you know Jesse doesn't get away in this situation. So it's a suspenseful moment to 
to see how this goes down. Like, does he does he shoot Jesse in his leg and they remove the bullet or something like that? I didn't I didn't know, but I knew they were both going to survive. So I just didn't know how it was going to play out. So it was suspenseful in that idea. But then the, only, the whole reason they kind of show this scene is to show that Jesse has Jesse knows that Todd has his money in his house. So it makes it so Jesse goes to Todd's house. To get the money because he needs money to be able to give it to the guy who helped Walt and Saul get out of town and get a whole new life. He had to give him money so Jesse can go. So he goes there and he, he ransacks the house. He actually destroys his house looking for the money. And then he finally finds it. He thinks he looks at the fridge and goes, There's a lot of room in there. And he cracks it open and a, a pa- like I don't know what they're called, but a bunch of money just falls out. And he's like, He finds it. And then all of a sudden, police come and he goes, Crap, so he has to hide. And it's playing out and he, and he hides in some place and the guard finds him and he pulls a gun on him and says, I'm not a cop killer. And he pulls out and then this whole scene's playing out. And they come in and then they hold Jesse down and they can't they get a wire to handcuff him. And then I was like, Okay, these aren't these aren't cops. And I I assume they were cops, especially because the ginger looks like a stereotypical cop from a, like a movie or TV series or anything. Just a ginger hair and a small little mustache. I assumed he was a cop, but he wasn't. And then they kind of and then he, he's holding it down, then he puts it in his mouth, and then Jesse's like, I will tell, I know where the money is, you're obviously here for the money, if you let me out, I will, I'll bring you to the money, so they, the ginger guy has to go out with the landlord, so it's just him, Jesse, and the other guy, and they split the money three ways, so Jesse leaves, and then he goes, oh, I was wondering why you remember me, and when the other guy was leaving, and I was like, who the hell is he, I have no idea who he was, I was trying to think, who the hell is this guy, my mind went to, I thought it was, I think it was back in season two when Jesse was homeless and he hopped over the fence into the guy's yard and he fell into the toilet and it's like the toilet broke. I thought it was him, but it wasn't him. It was some guy who was kind of made up for this movie. But anyways, he gets his money and he goes to the vacuum guy and he can't remember the saying, so he's saying, he just, he just kind of says, okay, just give it to me. And then he gives him, he puts out the 125 and then the guy goes, this is my money from the last time you didn't show up. I'm like, okay, that bag looked big. He's okay. And he's like, I think it was something like he was like 1800 off. I'm like, oh jeez, like, just let him go. Look at the guy. He's been in captivity for a year. Just let the guy go. But he, he didn't because he, in a way he can't. Because if he lets him go, everyone be expecting it then. Just because, oh, you let Jesse away. Why wouldn't you let me away with it? So he doesn't. Jesse has to go get money. So he calls his parents. And he tells his parents to meet him at some place. First, I thought he was going to say, I need 1800 euro. Can I have it? But then he gets him out of house. And he breaks into her house. I, ta- I assume he was going there to steal money. But he couldn't get money. So he just takes two guns. And he goes to the place where the guy. Who he split the money with. He goes there. And he has like. They have a whole. um, What they say. Like in the old west. They have a shootout. And it was. I was surprised how it played out. I didn't think Jesse would have done something like this. Where he has one gun. And he has another gun in his pocket. And he shoots the guy. But he shoots the guy from the gun in his pocket. And he has one bullet here. And a few in his chest. I was like. Holy shit. That's Jesse's third person. And the other guy. The ginger guy. They're shooting him. So he shoots him, and then that's the other three guys. He just takes their driving license. Goes, I know where you live. You do anything, I'll come and kill you and your entire family. So then the guys run out, and he takes the other guys half money. I don't think he took the gingers half money. And he goes, and then he gets his. He goes back to the vacuum guy, and he goes back to. He goes back to the vacuum guy, and the vacuum guy brings him to Alaska, and that's the end of Jesse. That was the end. He gets Jesse gets the happy ending, and. Alaska, we actually find out. I've, I, I, I know I watched the season recently, but I don't remember Mike ever saying Alaska to Jesse. But the idea of going to Alaska was because of Mike. You've got a nice scene with Mike and Jesse, and he's saying, If you were my age, where would you go? And Mike goes, I'd go to Alaska. And they're talking back and forth for a while. And you just know it's, an, it's, just, it's a really nice scene just because you could tell there's a mutual respect between the two of them that Walt and Mike never had. You tell there's just there is a relationship there. They both like each other, and it was just, it was a nice scene to watch, because I never, t- I, Mike was one person I actually never thought we would see in this movie, but someone I assumed we would see was Walt, and it was, as I was playing, I'm like, I don't, maybe we won't see him, especially because they say on the radio, he, like, he actually died, I'm like, oh, okay, he died, because I kind of had hope that he survived, and they put him in prison, just because the way they leave it open ended, they were right there, I thought, maybe, because he, he did die from his gunshot, as far as I know, but I assumed he was going to survive that and they were going to leave him in prison and Walt was somehow going to be in this movie. But no, his scene is... Memory, his flashback scene is based in when they cook all of their meth. Like back in the um, RV when they had a lot and Walt tricks them into going there and they cook every single methamine they have 
so that's all of them and they're talking about how what they're gonna do with it and then Walt says a brilliant line saying I'm just jealous of you that you found something to do that's so perfect and so brilliant at such a young age and you can tell then that's when Walt really fell in love with cooking all the meth like you knew he before but that when he heard that line like okay he's loved this right from the start now it was good to see Walt but as well as Todd you could tell there was something like there was something off about the way he looked and he looked the same the moustache was okay but you could tell I'm pretty sure now he, he there's no way he shaved his head I'm pretty sure that's a bald patch or a bald cap because it did look very weird his head his head shape just looked a lot bigger than it didn't break bad but I had I was kind of happy to see Walt again because like even though I just finished the show just to see a little bit more of Walt and Jesse when they were happy I did really enjoy to see that but after everything Jesse has been through from season one to five of Breaking Bad just to see him get a happy ending I was I was just thrilled he's too, like he just deserves just to be happy and peaceful and he gives a letter to that man I can't remember his name now but the guy the vacuum guy he gives a letter to send out to Brock because he's saying go down to Mexico I'll give you that letter to send up to Brock so he gives that letter and I was thinking when he was handling I'm like who the hell is this letter for is it his parents is it for Stinky Pete or Stinky Skinny Pete and Badger I thought it was going to be for them to send so he just said like I'm okay but no it was actually for Brock I never in a million years considered it to be for Brock I don't know why I completely forgot about that kid but I was just very happy and we kind of see Jesse is like a little scene with Jesse and Jessica Jones and they're talking and it was just nice as well I didn't think we'd see her in this movie even though she was at the premiere I didn't really consider seeing her and you could show that Jesse actually really really loved her which was it makes it even more heartbreaking that she did lose her it's just an early and just a horrible way that Walter White let her die just it was heartbreaking just to know how much he actually did love her but the ending he got I'm actually thrilled Jesse's he's happy he's alone he's away from everything he's just he's gonna be happy because he's gonna do something that will be legal he'll move on he, he has enough money there to start up He'd be away from everything and just he even said at the end it's it's nice and quiet here that's what just i that man has just been butchered he had such a brutal two years i just want him to have the rest of his life just be peaceful and i don't think we don't i don't want to see anything else actually just because that ending was so perfect for him like anything else would just damage the perfect life he's gonna have up there i want to know that jesse is just happy up there that's that's how i want the ending of breaking bad for jesse to be Overall, El Camino, a Breaking Bad movie, was absolutely fantastic. At first, I was not sure about it, but the more I think about it, the more I love this ending. So, this is a spoiler review, so let me know, full spoilers now, down below, what you thought about this movie. I want to hear your thoughts on this movie, because I thought it was fantastic. Let me know if you loved it, if you hate it, what you didn't like, what you liked, let me know about it. And even, just let me know if you think this is a good follow-up, or if they should just left it alone. But anyways... Click subscribe so you can see other videos just like this. I talk about movie reviews, spoiler reviews, and movie rankings, all that kind of stuff. So if you want to see that, click subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.